work is how we earn our, our living and, and how we put food on the table. But if we can empower individuals to have better lives, to be able to have more flexibility of what they do, when they do it, um, and, and how they do it, then I believe everybody wins. And now it's time once again for the show that gives glorious voice to 25 million business owners across the fruited plain. Radio Free Enterprise with Frank Felker. Thank you, Dude Walker. Yes, indeed, I am Frank Felker. Welcome back to Radio Free Enterprise. My guest today is Greg Kilstrom. He's an entrepreneur, a podcast host, a uh, best selling author and now the co-founder and CEO of an exciting new business concept that is targeted at the rapidly growing gig economy, companies called Career Gig. Greg Kilstrom, welcome to the program. Oh, thanks. And thanks so much for having me. Excited to talk. I'm excited to have you because I was surprised to hear uh, that you were the brains uh, or part of the brain trust behind Career Gig. And we'll talk about that in a moment. But we've got a lot of ground to cover. I, I really think a good place for us to start is to sort of paint a frame of reference uh, for our viewers and listeners about uh, coming down to Career Gig by starting with what exactly is the gig economy? What's uh, Greg Kilstrom's definition of the of the gig economy? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, Career Gig fits a piece of that. But really, to take it back a step, the the gig economy is really the part of the workforce that consists of hourly, part-time, um, project, all of those types of work that is not full-time employment. So this could be anything from an Uber driver to a contractor that has a six-month engagement with a large corporation. Um, this part of the workforce is about, um, it's, it's about 36% of the, of the U.S. workforce set to grow to about 50% of the workforce by 2027. And those are actually pre-COVID numbers, as we'll probably talk about later on. I, I believe that some of the recent changes and, and things that the workforce has been going through have actually accelerated that. So where did this come from, this gig economy? I remember maybe 20 years ago, uh, reading an article in the Wall Street Journal about how employment was moving more to what it called at that time the Hollywood model. You know, you have a director of photography and the best boy and the electrician, and a certain group will come together to work on one film. And then when that film wraps, they all go their separate ways and may or may not meet again in a future project. How is it that the American economy has shifted so strongly from a more traditional career path with full-time W-2 to the gig economy with more and more people working part-time and, and not uh, staying with the same employer for very long at all? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. I think this is, the, we've really been on this path for, I would say, you know, over 50 years at this point. So the, the lowest point as far as the amount of freelancers and, and independent workers in the U.S. economy is, was about in the late 70s. So ever since that point, we've been on this, it started slow at first, but we've been on this upward trajectory of more and more independence. And what I've seen even in my career, um, you know, everything from 9-11 and that financial crisis to 2008 and 2009, and again, another financial crisis, um, that one in particular, I think was really the, that really is where the gig economy was born. You see companies like Uber and Lyft and Instacart and all of those really coming out of that, that 2009, 2010 time period. And now we're in this, this new financial crisis with companies, uh, furloughing, laying off, firing employees and everyone really kind of struggling with how do we have stability? Um, in a world that seems increasingly unstable, and you know, how do corporations find that, as well as how do individuals find that? I mean, a lot of the things that, a lot of the reasons, I guess, why people don't go into either self-employment or freelance are things like, as a full-time employee, you get benefits, you get paid time off, you get all of those kind of perks that keep keep life stable, so you can focus on your work. 
Um, this has been, and certainly this is a, a focus of, of career gig and, and solving some of those issues, but as, it, as it's become easier to find uh, new work, so things like, you know, even back in the day, a website called Elance has then, you know, transitioned into, into a, a, another, another company and, and platforms like that really grew from um, this idea of the online marketplace being a way for people to find work that really started transforming things altogether. And then again, you see things like Uber, Lyft, and, and all those that make it easier to sign up as a gig worker. We see this confluence of, wow, now it's so much easier to find work. We still have to solve some of those uh, financial stability and, and healthcare and, and all of those kinds of stability as well. But um, a lot of the, the finding the jobs problem is, is getting easier and easier. So as with uh, everything in life, I guess, there are advantages and disadvantages for the workers uh, with the gig economy. A lot of people pre-COVID, more people probably than today, chose this career path. But today, so many people are having it uh, forced on them. Um, you've touched on a number of issues that uh, confront uh, gig workers or, or workers in general in the new economy. What sort of pressures or problems is this new way of doing things putting on the employers? What problems are they facing in, in this brave new world? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the, the biggest umbrella to look at is just the need for flexibility and to be able to scale up, scale down. Uh, lots of industries have seasonal, you know, like retail is, is a big example of an industry that has always had the seasonal need to, you know, holidays, they scale up and, and down afterwards and, and things like that. But what we're seeing is not only is it even getting more volatile in the retail industry, but it's it's every industry is, is now needing to address this. So whether it's COVID or some other, um, some other ramifications of, of financial crises, so on and so forth, um, companies just need to find a way to get really highly skilled or specialized talent in a way that is flexible enough that they're not bringing on a bunch of full-time employees and then firing them three months later. I think that's that's a big need in the in the workforce right now, and and finding the types of employees that are comfortable with that um, means again we need to solve some of those those um, those employee and and uh, consumer challenges. Great. All right, well, that's a perfect way for us to transition back to what my next question was going to be. Let's go back to the realm of the gig workers, the employees, and uh, we've discussed the, the problems that they face. What, uh, how does career gig solve their problem? Well, let me, let me just stop for a second. What is career gig? What, uh, what caused you to create it and, and what, how do you foresee it's at a very high level, uh, its functionality in this new workplace? Yeah, absolutely. So the uh, career gig really solves a lot of what I'm talking about um, or what I've been talking about on both sides of the equation. So you can't have happy contractors and freelancers and you know 1099 employees without taking care of the rest of their lives. And and I'll get to that in a second. But and on the on the company and employer side. Um, they need to solve this this way of finding how do we get contractors onboarded and know exactly what their skills are, know that they can handle the work that we're going to give them. When you think about traditional employment, they say it takes about 90 to 120 days to really become onboarded into your, into your job. Well, if you hire contractors, hourly workers, part-time, you don't have 90 to 120 days. Sometimes you have a matter of hours, if not maybe a couple of days to really get them onboarded. So what career gig does is really addresses both issues. So we find um, highly skilled, verified talent. So what verified means is we give skills assessments, we do background checks, we make sure that you know you went to the school you say you did, you have the certifications you need, um, all of you have the work experience that you say you did. Um, and even customize some of the onboarding and, and assessments to make sure that it's absolutely what an employer is looking for, um, and then match those with the companies that are looking for them. So, and then on top of that, on the freelancer side, 
to take care of the rest of their life. So, you know, you're uh, you're an independent, you don't, you can't rely on company health benefits, you can't rely on retirement plans and all those things that might be provided, 401ks by a, by a company, you've got to get that on your own. And so you've got a few options, but not a lot. Um, on the healthcare side, maybe you go through ACA and you can do that. Um, it, sometimes the, the pricing is, is okay. A lot of times it's expensive and you kind of get what you can. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but you could go through who to get insurance? Oh, the, the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare. Is, is, oh, I'm is, sorry. Is okay. Right, yeah, no, no problem. Mm -hmm. So that's, and that's, it's good that that exists. It, it solves, it solves a lot of challenges, but these exchanges, you know, one of the things that we offer also is counseling to freelancers on what's the best use of those dollars that, that you need to spend on, on health insurance and retirement and all that. So we help solve that. And on top of that, even we contribute some of our fees into helping freelancers pay for their premiums. So all, all of that kind of adds up to, you know, you find work, um, you can get paid easily through our platform, and then you can get benefits. So we really, we really address all of those things. Well, and we clearly, there's a, a lot of layers to that onion as far as the benefits <laughs> and insurance and all that kind of jazz uh, that we don't have time to go into, but I'm sure that people can learn more about it on your, on your website and elsewhere. But Absolutely. let's talk for a minute about the, uh, the employers again. They have options as well in terms of how they uh, do the types of things that you're talking about. They need to find uh, qualified, vetted, uh, quality workers quickly uh, that they can bring into their system. And I imagine they have other options available right now. How does CareerGig compare and contrast to that? And why would they want to choose CareerGig over other options? Yeah, that's a great question. So we fit an interesting niche between, so if you look at, there, there's kind of two ends of, of the of the platform or of the of the offering. So there are on the low end, I'll say there's the the Upworks and Fivers and these these gig work platforms that you know what they're great for if you need to spend fifty dollars on a, a designer for something that's great. Um, but they're not great for highly skilled specialized uh, engagements where you need to spend thousands and thousands of dollars and you need to have a high degree of trust in them. Um, and then on the higher end of that, there are staffing companies that do a great job if you need to fill a, you know, a full-time position or you know, the permanent placement type thing, or even maybe a long-term contractor gig or, or something like that. Where we fill the niche is um, finding people, finding them quickly, finding them um, and, and verifying that they can do, again, what they, say, what they say their skills are. We can assess that and verify that. We can do background checks, ID verification, all that very quickly. Unlike the staffing companies that they do a good job, but they ha they take a, it takes a lot of people, a lot of overhead. Their fees are often exorbitant. You know, thirty percent of someone's first year salary. Those kinds of things that becomes very very cost prohibitive to a company that needs to be nimble and move quickly. Our fees are a fraction of those. Some of our fees even go into paying for benefits for these people. That's another that's, a, that's another aspect. Those companies that really want to help these contractors, they may not be able to give them full time jobs. They can actually help their contractors have uh, health, retirement, other benefits at no additional cost to them. Um, we take you know we take on some of those fees, and the, the freelancers get access to discounted benefits as well. So in that in that niche. There's some players in the middle of the market, um, you know, in a in a similar enough space on the sourcing side. Let's say, you know, they have marketplaces where you can find work, but they're not doing what we're doing as far as automating and, and speeding up background checks. And they they the reputation management part of that, I guess, is another way of saying the background and assessments. That's another thing that we do um, much better and quicker and, and cheaper than than others. Now, what types that you mentioned earlier in defining the gig economy and gig workers and so forth, things like uh, Uber and Lyft drivers. But I imagine that uh, the skills and the tasks uh, are all over the place and may well get into very highly skilled jobs. What types of jobs are you filling and what types of jobs are employers looking to fill through a marketplace like CareerGig? Sure. Yeah, the, the, the main... 
we work across many industries, but I think the main ones that we're finding are um, we're, we're making a lot of traction in are things like healthcare, where you've got uh, you need to verify registered nurses and, and, and things like that. And technology, where there are either industry certifications or uh, company specific or platform specific um, certifications. Uh, we are making some some headways into things like retail and hospitality where there's just a, a very pressing need to find people uh, again do the background checks on them and, and make sure um, make sure they're a good fit very quickly and easily and that that's more of a volume I need to find 200 people in South Florida and and I don't have time to go through a recruiting firm or things like that so um, other so a few others like manufacturing, another one where there's very specific skills that are needed. So there's there's a few areas like that that we're finding a lot of traction in. I was just uh, seeing where uh, you know Tesla, as an example, is growing like mad and opening manufacturing plants as well as uh, software offices, all kinds of different things. So for a company like them, like they just throw out a number. Well, we're hiring five thousand developers in Austin. Uh, you guys, uh, due to the automation, and, and isn't there AI, a, a certain layer of AI involved with what you do? Does this allow you to uh, be able to handle that kind of volume request? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so we can, um, you know, we can find those people again, we can create a customized assessment. So, you know, if Tesla is looking for, you know, 2,000 people that have this exact experience, we can not only ask that question on the on the application, but also say, okay, we'll prove it, and you know, take this assessment and, and and show that you can do that. We can create that customized for you know for a company based on exactly what they need, um, and and therefore you know circumvent this this whole thing of it's time to productivity is is a key metric that companies are are looking at, and if we can even if we can improve that by a couple of days. That can be millions of dollars in, in productivity savings. Wow. Yeah, that's interesting. I can see that. And uh, wow, we're just the everything is moving so quickly these days. I mean, yeah. it's just amazing. But I, uh, you know, sort of a, a, a first principle of creating a market is the free flow of information and that it's correct information relative to pricing and quality and all that kind of jazz. And it sounds as though that's sort of baked into career gig that from, I would imagine, both an employer and a gig worker's perspective, they'll get correct information, timely information about what's happening on the other side of the table that will help them make the best decision. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the the traditional model of online ratings and reputation, I really feel like it's broken. And so, you know, an example of this not to call out too many competitor names, but you know, you go to you go to an Upwork or a Fiverr, and again, find platforms for what they are. But if I see someone with a five star rating, the first thing that comes to my mind is not necessarily, oh wow, they've earned all of those stars, but how easy is it to gain that that platform? Or you know, someone that gets down to two stars because you know, even through no fault of their own, they they messed up a couple of jobs. You delete your profile, you start over, and all of a sudden you can get back up to five stars. What does that mean at the end of the day? It just it's a it's a vanity number that you can that you can show. We're going for something much deeper with that. And that's where, you know, the, the start for us really is where we are now, which is doing, you know, getting verified backgrounds on people and saying, again, this isn't just what I want to say about myself on my social media profile. This is verified information. We're building technologies based on blockchain and, and several other things that are really going to take our reputation management um, even further. And, you know, I'll be excited to, to talk about that hopefully in a few months. That's great. I look forward to hearing about that. Now, I want to tell a funny story to our viewers and listeners about how I became uh, aware of Career Gig. Uh, you and I were introduced uh, virtually, uh, I don't know, 12 to 18 months ago or something like that. And we worked together on a marketing project. And then, you know, after that, it was like, well, you know, nice, nice knowing you. And uh, right. we, <laughs> we kind of uh, were on each other's email distribution lists and so whatever. But then completely disconnected from that several months later, I guess, uh, just recently, last month or so, I get, uh, I start seeing things about this new idea, career gig. And I'm seeing things about it on Facebook and LinkedIn and news items and 
you know, all over the place. And as I read into it, as as, uh, as obvious, I was very interested in what career gig was up to. I thought it was a neat idea. Then one day I get an email from Greg Kilstrom talking about the launch of career gig. And I was like, huh? You know, I, I, I didn't know there was any connection. And then I go to the website and I find out that you're a, a co-founder and CEO. What, uh, where did this come from, Greg? I mean, you've got so, you have, you're, you know, local legend in the local tech and marketing community, and you've been involved in a lot of different uh, businesses and concepts and activities. Where did career gig come from? Yeah, I mean, I think the, I've definitely been, I've, I've been involved in a few different things over my career, but I mean, I, I, I do see a common trajectory over over all of these things. And, and what I've tried to do is, Really, the I've written a series of books, and I have my own podcast called The Agile World. Um, what I've tried to do over the series of those of those books is really talk about a, a bigger issue, um, and I think a good trend, a positive trend that's happening in the world, which is shifting the power dynamic from large entities and large organizations to the individual. And so, you know, I, I wrote a book called The Agile Brand, which talks about that even from a, from a customer-centric standpoint. I wrote The Agile Consumer, which talks about increasing um, power in the hands of the consumer based on more choice and easier access. And Career Gig is really, I think, along that continuum of there's nothing wrong with large corporations and companies. They hire a lot of people. They put a lot of money into the company. They're, they're great. But what can we do to empower individuals to have better lives? And, you know, it's not just about work. Um, work is how we earn our, our living and, and how we put food on the table. But if we can empower individuals to have better lives, to be able to have more flexibility of what they do, when they do it, um, and and how they do it, then I believe everybody wins. Companies have um, happier employees or contractors, and the people doing the work are happier, and they're going to give better um, customer service. They're going to create better products, and really, I th I see it as a win win. So that's that's really where this this idea was born out of is how do we kind of dive deeper and 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 give more power to the individual. That's great, and. When you're, you know, identifying a, a true problem, a real need in the marketplace and coming up with an innovative and effective solution, that is the clear path to business success. And uh, I think it's uh, wonderful that you identified this problem and came up with a, a solution that works for everybody around the table. Oh, thank okay. you. Greg, we're just about out of time. I'm wondering, uh, I imagine people watching this or listening to it, the audio file. Uh, we'll be curious uh, how they can learn more about you, uh, perhaps connect with you, keep on top of what's going on with Career Gig. What's what's the best way for somebody to connect with you? Yeah, absolutely. So two things I would say. I mean, definitely go to careergig.com um, and check us out. Uh, you can sign up as both a freelancer as well as a company. So. Uh, definitely recommend doing that. And then I would say I'm very active on LinkedIn. Connect with me, send me a message, and, and let's let's talk. Great. Well, I often like to ask uh, before we sign off, we talked about a lot of different stuff. Is there anything that I haven't asked you or a thought that's come to mind that you'd like to share before we go? No, I think we I think we pretty much covered it. No, I, I appreciate the time to be able to to be able to talk about this. I feel like we're really onto something here, and and I love to be able to, in a way, do something that's helpful in this very difficult time for so many people. It's 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 a uh, difficult for companies and it's diff difficult for individuals, and I feel like we're doing something to to help both. Greg Kilstrom, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks again to Greg Kilstrom, and thank you for joining us. Until next time, I'm Frank Felker saying, I'll see you on the radio. Forgiving your entrepreneurial sins with a gentle wave of his microphone, here's Frank Felker. Frank Felker.